Okay, Keith, to start with, news of course broke on Monday. Everton and Nottingham Forest are facing charges for violating the Premier League's profit and sustainability rules. What was your immediate reaction and concerns? I think the immediate reaction was that the Premier League are tying themselves up in knots and the whole double jeopardy issue is something that I think is quite important. And it's just becoming a complex mess that need not have happened. And uh, there have been other ways to have got around this. So that was my initial reaction was, what the bloody hell are they up to? <laughs> and is it, so you mentioned about, about double jeopardy, of course, that is a, that's I'm sure a case that Everton are going to raise. Is it fair though, that now Everton not only are, are facing one breach, they're going on to face another when the first hasn't been concluded. What's your thoughts about that? Should it be taken one case at a time? Because of course, as they've announced, they're not going to do it at the same time. How, what are your thoughts on that generally? Well, there's a very important point, I think, about this that, that did raise itself in yesterday's select committee hearing as well with Richard Masters. And yes, of course, on the Everton issue, I do believe the first case should have been resolved before any second case could have been uh, issued. But more importantly, this brings up to me the fact that the Man City case itself should have been resolved first before any other clubs and cases should have been heard. The reason I think that is because we're now seeing so clearly that any points deductions or anything of that scale impact the table and the integrity of the Premier League. And you can't have cases like Man City still outstanding when other things are happening. So it should be taken case by case in the order in which they're charged and everything should wait until each one is resolved in turn. And that to me is the most sensible way to do it. Now, if they've got a big problem with Man City, which they obviously have, then so what? They've got to wait. And, you know, that's the problem they, they're facing themselves. So I think things should be done in order. And I think that's a, that's a pretty important point. And what were your thoughts when Richard Masters says that the, there is a date set for Manchester City, but they can't say what it is publicly? What are your thoughts about that? Well, also Richard Masters just before that had said that they're very transparent. Well, obviously they're not transparent. And that's, you know, absolutely ridiculous. Now, the other thing that I'm really angry about in the Premier League just now is that the chairman, who is um, Alison Britton, uh, very few people have heard of Alison Britton, but she is actually the chairman of the Premier League. Maybe she's the Paula Vanells of the Premier League, because we haven't heard one word from her. And this is a very important case about Everton, who are found with the Premier League, one of the major clubs in, in the league. The first time ever the Premier League's done a 10-point deduction. And here they are, the chairman's not even getting involved. Now, is it because she doesn't understand the detail about this? Why wasn't she on the uh, select committee yesterday? Rick Parry, who's the chairman of the EFL, was. So why wasn't the chairman of the Premier League? Is it because she doesn't really understand it? Is it because she hasn't got a view on this? We have to hear from the chairman. This is a very serious thing. And uh, without hearing from her, then she, she's useless, as far as I'm concerned. We are, what's her role as a chairman if she's not getting involved in an issue this big? I mean, the other thing, talking of that, Keith, that Masters raised was in terms of Chelsea. He, of course, said we won't announce the outcome of, of anything until the investigation has been completed. What do you make of that, not only with Man City and, and sort of the, you know, the points that you've raised, but in terms of Chelsea, when there's obviously quite a lot that they're investigating, but they're not willing to go public. And yet with both Everton and Forest, they've been very honest and open with what's going on. What are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are overall how... I don't think Masters is up for this job because he's leading the the, uh, the Premier League down rabbit holes that are overly detailed and are, you know, a, a massive amount of detail involved. We understand that and it does take time, but therefore everything else should be put behind it. In the time when I was on the Premier League board, Richard Scudamore led the league and I can assure you we'd have found ways to have got around this without the mess we're now involved in. And I think this goes to Master's experience. And I'm afraid to say I'd have to call for his resignation right now because I think the handling of this is absolutely uh, is, is leading the league and the Premier League, which is a, a, a great product throughout the world, you know, glorified throughout the world. It's becoming a, a laughing stock. And I'm afraid that his interpretation of the rules and the way it's being handled politically uh, is, is very wrong. And it should have been handled at the top behind the scenes in a better way than this. And going forwards, Keith, of course, when we last spoke about Everton, we assumed that there might be some points given back after the points, of course, that were deducted. What do you see the outcome of this breach being? Because, of course, it looks like it actually might happen and might conclude post-Premier League season ending. Well, that's 
I say the worrying thing here on, on that issue is that not only is it a points deduction, what that means is that players who are thinking about should I renew my contract or different things will then decide about possibly going to other clubs and we may lose players. Now, was that the intended you know, consequence of a points deduction or something about a breach of financial fair play to punish a club, not only with points, but to lose players, to look, to disrupt their squad? Uh, it's going way beyond. It's it's becoming draconian in the uh, the effect it's having. And again, that's because it's not being thought through properly by the authorities. And I wonder, I wonder going forwards what that will look like, but I'm going to come to that in just a minute because I'm intrigued to get your overall summation. If we look at Everton's league position, as we discussed previously when we spoke, so please go and do listen to that podcast episode if you have missed it. At that point, of course, Everton were in the relegation zone. They've now climbed out there one point um, above the drop zone. What's the general feeling among Everton fans, Keith? Are fans confident that Everton are going to stay up regardless of, of this potential points deduction that may happen as well? What's the feeling now that this has come into play? Well, I think the feeling is still very positive that, yes, Sean Dyche has got the squad playing well. Uh, I saw one group today saying, OK, if we got a 10-point deduction, which we already have, and then we got another one, we'd still stay up. <laughs> um, you know, there's, uh, there's a battling feeling, that certainly amongst the fans. And I think there's just an amazement still that, something that is relatively minor in terms of the scale of finances, although Everton have admitted they've done done wrong, has ended in such a draconian penalty. And that's the issue that I think we're, uh, we're having to face. Could all of these alleged charges, Keith, actually damage the reputation of the Premier League? You've now mentioned, you mentioned earlier, you called it a laughing stock. Could this long term have a really, really negative impact on the league's reputation? It really does have a big impact. Now, I mean, you know yourself that the uh, things like stock exchanges around the world, the reputation is based on the regulation and the, you know, based on how well they, they actually are regulated. And that's how the financial market in Britain has done so well. The Premier League is exactly the same. And I think we're being looked at. And you know, leagues like La Liga are laughing just now. Uh, many, many new areas will, of, of growth and development who will be challenging the Premier League will see this as a weakness and a chance to go forward. And again, I will say it happened on the chairman, Alison Britton, and Richard Masters watch, and they must be held accountable. If this process does end after the Premier League season, do you think they're going to have to relook at this and structure it differently? Because, of course, one of the arguments has been actually that you know the, these um, the way that they're dealing with some of the, the sanctions has come into play. It's a, it's a new thing that they're they're imposing. Whereas actually, how this is being handled seems to be really, I mean, really badly criticised by the fans. Well, already Masters said yesterday, again at the Select Committee, that they're moving towards the UEFA method of financial fair play, which means they're already admitting that what they have at present is not fit for purpose. So, again, you know, it's it's just weird uh, how this is, is happening. And then I say it it, it, be, it beggars belief. And so to admit that, you're per that the rules that you're using right now are not really fit for purpose, yet you're using them to penalise clubs in such a way, there's got to be a better way around this and that there should have been some way to have uh, to have handled this better. I mean, one thing that's been brought up, Keith, which is totally relevant, is, of course, there's been reignited calls now for an independent regulator in English football. Is that a viable solution to address concerns about FFP and overall governance of clubs? Well, the, the, the Premier League have always been against that uh, independent regulator, but they're, make, they're making the case stronger than anybody else why we need to have one, because they have proven that they cannot regulate the Premier League properly. So therefore, I think the independent regulators case has been strengthened and it's their own fault. And uh, I think one's going to come in and this is a big reason why. And if you were still at Everton at this present moment, what would you be saying, number one, but also how confident would you be about this season and sort of the foreseeable future for the club? Look, it's, it's a state of flux at the moment. It's a very difficult position. You're having to react day by day, hour by hour in certain cases. So it's very hard to look forward much further than, uh, you know, a couple of days at a time. And what can fans look forward to? Aside everything going on on the pitch, of course, we've seen some issues with VAR, including Dominic Calvert-Lewin getting sent off quite controversially. Apart from the stadium, are there any other things that fans can really look at and go, this looks fantastic for us? Look, having probably the best stadium in the whole of football um, is going to be something to look forward to. Uh, it, and certainly the way that Sean Dyche has got the squad playing is also something that Everton fans are happy about. So at the end of the day, we're a football club. We have to play good football. We have to fight like Everton do. 
And then to have it in a great stadium, then the future can look rosy again once we get through this period of turbulence. And it is turbulence. And unfortunately, we got the wrong captain at the controls. And are you imagining that it's going to be a 10-point deduction? What is this sanction going to be if it does come to fruition? Uh, the talk has been about it being six points. But look, again, if the appeal is successful, then I don't think there'll be any points at all. Both sanctions could be lifted, uh, which I'm, I'm still hopeful for. And if that's the case, then it'll have meant that Everton may again have a big problem with spending because they've spent so much on, on KCs and, and lawyers, uh, which would be a ridiculous expenditure that we could uh, could have to, had to have. And, uh, you know, maybe there's a case for making the Premier League pay for this and make them you know, stop and think twice about handing out such ridiculous sanctions. You've just watched a segment from Football Insider's brand new podcast, The Inside Track, with me, Lewis Pears, alongside the guests on the show. Thanks very much for tuning in. Please do give the video a like, comment your thoughts on the topic, and feel free to share on your social media pages. If you want to listen to the full podcast episode, click the link in the description below. Keep your eyes peeled for plenty more content and exclusives here on The Inside Track.